Welcome back to another exciting, but uh, I believe another short video here at Blue Glow Electronics today. And um, what I'm doing is I'm going to rebuild the infamous P700 phono board. And I've got this uh, unit laying on its back so you can see get a good picture of the phono board. This P700 board was used in quite a few different Marantz units. I know the 2235. 2245, 2270, 2275, and maybe maybe others. I have to go look, but um, this board is basically the phono board, and all it does is the uh, first step of amplification in the you know coming out of the phono jacks before it sends it over to the preamp here. Um, I was going to show you what all needs to be done to do a complete rebuild of the phono board, and this is one where I've got a customer saying that basically they've got some. Uh, some intermittent popping noise, so I thought I'd take the chance to go through this thing completely. Um, first up, let me show you the list of everything that uh, that I've assembled here. That uh, from many different forums that I've read, past experience of my own, and whatnot, and and diving deep into the but the Marantz 2270 schematics, um, uh, 2235 schematic, and uh, and some service bulletins around a couple different ones. Um, so. There's a couple components here, and I'll walk you through them. Um, they're C701 and C702. And um, that's both these little blue tantalum capacitors right here. Now, I will tell you that on some of the Marantz P700 boards, they didn't use the little tantalums here. They used a full-size um, poly cap that looks much like one of these. So, And you can see there's plenty of space here. They've got a great big gap there. Why they switched to these tantalums at some point, I do not know. I know they were cheap, but tantalums have just not held up well over time at all. So um, we're going to replace those. The, originally, they were 0.47 microfarads. We're going to replace those with some one microfarad Panasonic um, caps. And you don't you don't really need anything over much over um, say 50 volts, but um, I'm going to put these in there 400 volt uh, 0.1 uh, Panasonic caps. And they're actually smaller than the ones that are in there. So um, next up, C714 and 715. Same thing. We're going to replace those. And that happens to be these two large ones on the back side here. So we're going to end up with these two and these two both replaced with the uh, 1 microfarad. And in this case, 400 volts, uh, 250 or either 100, even 100 volts would be fine. Up next, we're going to replace C703, C704. These are tantalums as well. Um, and we're going to replace them with 22 microfarads, and they just need to be 6.3 volts or higher. And these are part of the uh, kind of feedback path. So um, and the, the, the smaller capacitor, the lower ESR, the better off you are. But um, in my case, all I've got on hand is some 0.22 or 50 volts. Um, and you can see those laying right here. Um, some good old Nikki cons, and we're going to get those two um, put in. And those are right here. They're these kind of red um, globs with the dots on them, and they are polarized. You can see it's got a plus sign on one end of them. The other four I showed you up for, front, this one, this one, the two blue ones, um, they're non polarized. You can put them in any direction, but C704 and C705 right here, they are polarized. Um, so that gets rid of those six capacitors. We'll use four of these and these two here. Next up, um, H707 and H708. We need to replace both of those diodes with 1N4448 or you can use 1N4148s. And that's these two diodes right here. They're teeny little bitty drops um, known for being noisy. And so we're going to replace both of those. And it wouldn't be a good electronic uh, shop if you didn't have a bag full of 1N4148. So um, it's a really common small signal transistor. So I'm going to put in uh, one of those for each of the uh, H708 and 707. Then you've got H709, which is another diode. And what you end up having to do um, is you actually use either two of the 1N4448s or two of the 1N4148s in series with each other. Basically, um, this little diode right here, another little dot, it has a higher voltage drop on it, and so two of these series together will give you the right drop for that. And um, 
I'm not making this stuff up. These are very proven techniques done by lots of uh, Marantz enthusiasts over time. So the three of these, one in four, one in four, one four eights, will get you uh, get you these three things here taken care of. Up next, you've got C713, which is 150. 100 microfarad. The original was at 50 volts. I ended up putting a 63 volt in. Um, this I've already done this one. Um, so there's three things on this list that I've already done. And then I realized, hey, I should probably make a video of this. But um, right here, the only thing you got to watch out for is if you jump up to like a uh, 100 microfarad, 100 volt, sometimes the cap will get pretty tall and you won't have enough clearance under here. So make sure this is a height sensitive cap. And I went with this 63 volt uh, nice zircon uh, capacitor right here. And then the last thing on the list here is H705, H706, which are some 2SC458 transistors. And it's these two transistors right here, one on each side of that capacitor, notorious for being noisy in these units. Um, I restored a 2270 the other day for a guy and posted a video and um, I replaced both of these. But let me show you what you replace them with. Um, Fairchild makes some semiconductors called the KSC1845. And um, if you see here, I got a bag of about 50 of them or more. Um, they're dirt cheap. I mean, these things are like, I don't know, a nickel a piece or something like that. About $2 worth. And <laughs> I got a huge bag here. But um, when you go to order them, it may say KSC1845 and then have three or four other letters after it. But um, I found over time that it really doesn't matter uh, as long as it's got the KSC 1450, 1845 in it, it works quite well. The other thing you got to pay attention to is just the layout. These things are emitter collector base, and if you look at the original ones in here, uh, they were actually laid out base collector emitter, so they actually end up going in backwards from these original ones. And let me show you how to tell if you've got the original 2SC 458s in there. Um, you see these capacitors, see how they're square? Um, instead of uh, like a, you know, you see on these new ones here, they're, um, they're a rounded capacitor on the end. These things are very square and they have a cut notch on them um, to, to indicate which side's the front. If you see those things sitting in, in, in here, you need to go ahead and replace them. They're just historically known for being kind of, uh, they break down over time and they get noisy. And I posted a video one time where I'd replaced these, and I had somebody reply to me and basically say, hey, transist you're talking about a capacitor or a vacuum tube or something else. Transistors don't break down over time, and they don't get leaky, and they don't cause noise. And I pointed them to a, uh, an article or two out on the web, which uh, had about 20 other people, experts in the field, saying that they do. And... Uh, so hopefully that answered their question, but yes, they do. And uh, that's a great example of what you want to replace um, right here when you do run across those. So um, we're going to go ahead, since I've already replaced these two and this capacitor, so those are the three things I've done. We're going to replace these two, um, these two, the tantalums, and then we're going to get these three diodes, and we'll call this uh, P700 phono board uh, pretty much done at that point. Hold tight. Okay, first thing you do, just a standard Phillips screwdriver, there are four, um, four screws that hold this thing in, and once you get them out, the thing lifts up, upside down, or come up. That's about as far as you're going to be able to get it, uh, but you can get on the other side to unsolder and work with it. And then there's also a piece of paper here underneath of it that'll, that'll mount back under there. It's just to, to make sure none of these leads end up touching anything at any point in time. All right, one thing to note, if you pull up the glue that was underneath these original um, you know, kind of polycaps here on the, on the end, um, if you pull up the glue, there's a second set of holes even closer together. So you've got four holes here, and if you look at the other side, they all go to the exact same place here. So you kind of got this outer set that the originals used, and then you've got an inner set of holes. And uh, I want to take advantage of the inner set because these are a little... As you can see, they're a little uh, narrower than the original caps. So uh, without the bending the leads, I can basically, if I pull up the glue, use these uh, small inner holes right here. And uh, it'll fit right in there right nicely and uh, solder up and uh, same effect without bending the leads. Okay, take a look. Got the four poly caps, new Panasonic mounted in there. And uh, now we're going to move on to these two tantalums right here. and. Uh, you notice down here, 
you see a plus sign right beside of it, it tells you which side's positive and which side's negative. And both sides have that. Okay, we've got these two caps replaced as well. So onward uh, to uh, bigger things. If you notice, I got the stripe pointing towards me, and then the plus sign was on the other side of the capacitor, and uh, same on this one. So um, we've got the polarity in the right. Really, now we've got left is these uh, these three diodes. And remember, we got a double one up here on this one. Good news is you don't actually have to read these diodes. <laughs> They're so teeny. Um, the circuit circuit board here has a nice diode diagram underneath one. It's to tell you which end is the negative. And as you can see, I got my diodes laid out here. Um, went ahead and uh, put two of them together here, twisted them, soldered them in the middle, so uh, and they're in series in the right direct, both pointed in the same direction, and uh, got the other two laid out. We're going to go ahead and get those in. Okay, we got the diodes in. If you notice with these diodes, instead of standing them way up in the air, I just used some lead benders. Um, you've seen me use these before. And um, bent the leads over right here and to uh, drop those all the way down in and got the polarity right and then um, this one um, here that I had soldered together the, the adjacency to these pots right here these metal pots was so close that I took some of the black uh, sheathing uh, just wire cover off one of the existing one and I kind of mounted these up in the air as you can see here with the uh, um, just to make sure I didn't end up with any leads touching there. So I feel pretty good about it now. Uh, let's get this thing hooked up and uh, see how it sounds. Just one thing, don't forget, um, put this piece of um, paper back underneath of it when you go to mount it. And then uh, just one last thing, don't forget when you go to replace these transistors, the, uh, the, the see how these are base here, collector, emitter, it's even marked on the page like that. When you go to replace them, uh, these things are emitter collector based, so the uh, pinouts are different. So they'll actually go in what looks like backwards from the originals, if, uh, if that makes sense. At any rate, um, we're going to get this thing in here and uh, see how it does. Hopefully this, uh, this you'll, you have seen a full restoration of the P700 board used in many Marantz units. Just real quick to kind of give you orientation, um, you can see the faceplate of this thing. You can see the uh, tone controls here. Typically, they're hooked to the tone controls or right behind it in a Marantz unit. Is the preamp board, and as you can see, all oh, this one's been completely recapped end to end. Um, and then on one side, you usually find a power supply board, and then typically across on the other, you will see, let's see this Fulmer board. And uh, behind that, you'll end up with the transformer uh, capacitors, um, and then the output boards, and that, you know, it certainly varies a little bit, but in general, that's about what I see in these Marantz units. And I uh, got the four screws in it, got it all mounted back down. Alright, we've got the uh, phono board all installed at this point, uh, upgraded, and we've got the unit over here on phono, and um, as you can see here, I've, I went and grabbed an old turntable out of the out of the junk room and um, got it spinning over here. I will tell you um, the real only good way to test a phono section in an amplifier or a receiver is to use a phono <laughs> section. I've got one of these little um, uh, MCM makes these are used to. It's a line level to phono level adapter so you could uh, if you see here the cord that I normally use is just a uh, you know a small phono plug that then goes around back here. Let me spin this thing around. And you can see here it plugs into the uh, the other end of that cord plugs into the aux jack. And that's I usually plug my iPhone into that, and that's how I play music into it to test one out. But um, as you can see here, um, I've got the turntable going into the RCA jacks. Well, you could take this little unit and put it into the RCA jacks. And then you could just run the, uh, you know, your phone into this and uh, play through it. It does an impedance match and a uh, line level drop of the uh, of the signal down to the appropriate level, so it kind of works. Um, but you know, if you've been up, if you've been working on the phono section, and you want to just verify 100% that everything is good. I would highly recommend, um, you know, actually hooking a turntable up and uh, see what. See what happens here. So uh, I'll drop the, drop the needle down. So 
kind of good. Thanks again for watching another short uh, but exciting video hopefully here. hope you learned how to rebuild a uh, phono board uh, P700. Like I said, that P700 is in a lot of different Marantz units. So uh, you should be uh, able to re um, restore one of those at this point. Thanks.